representing hydrocarbons. So today's lesson, we're just going to look at um, a little bit about hydrocarbons and these carbon-hydrogen bonds um, that are formed in these organic compounds. Uh, and we will also look at how to go about drawing such structures, as we're going to see more of the uh, different types of uh, hydrocarbons in um, the next coming videos. Organic chemistry is such a diverse subject due to the unique properties of carbon. One of the most important things, uh, factors uh, that will help you with drawing these, um, uh, these hydrocarbon uh, compounds is the fact that carbon has four valence electrons. So what it means is it, it has the ability to form up the four covalent bonds either with itself, with, or sorry, not itself, but with other carbons or with other hydrogens. So it's really important to be able to identify the fact that carbon can form up the four bonds around it. Right? So we will see in the future coming lessons that carbon can form a single bond with another carbon, which leaves each carbon to form three more bonds around it. We will see how carbon can bond with itself twice, right? And so if they're bonded twice, we've used up two of the bonds, which means each carbon now can hold up to two more bonds, right? Two more hydrogens. And if we have carbon triple bonded to another carbon, right? We've used up three of each of these carbon bonds, which allows it only to bond one more time with either another carbon or with hydrogens. And that is pretty much our next point. Carbon is able to form single, double, or triple bonds with itself, therefore able to form long, stable chains with itself. And the last point, carbon can bond with itself in a variety of geometric shapes. So we'll see straight chains, we'll see rings that are, you know, and, and we're primarily going to look at the aliphatic uh, hydrocarbons. Um, as uh, we'll talk about what they are in the next uh, video, right? Uh, they can actually form uh, rings, uh, branch chains, tubes, spheres, uh, so many different geometric shapes. We're going to focus more on the uh, straight chains um, and the branch chains, as well as some rings in the upcoming lessons. Now, most organic molecules are very large with many atoms associated with each molecule. Therefore, scientists have developed a unique system of representing carbon compounds. Right, so we have an example here of propane. As we're going to see, this is the formula, C3H8. It can have other isomers of this right, um, that can still show C3H8. Right, so this is pretty much the, uh, the main isomer, and we call it propane. Okay? So we've got three carbons and we've got eight hydrogens that circle around each carbon. We can also come up with something called an expanded molecular formula, and these show how the carbon and hydrogens are actually grouped together. Here, if we look at this actual chemical formula, C3H8, we don't know really how the bonds go, right? But showing it as an expanded molecular formula shows us that, well, we know that looking at this, we've got three carbons that are bonded to one another, but the outer carbons contain three hydrogens around it, which leaves us with this middle carbon that is allowing only for two more bonds to, um, to, other to the hydrogens. So notice how each carbon is, has the ability to form up to four bonds because of the four valence electrons, and it's a really important property to know about carbon. Okay. Uh, technically, for me, for in this drawing, I should put in the hydrogens, but um, I'm going to allow it without. Okay. So if you were to ask to draw the C3 uh, C3H8 as a um, as a typical uh, propane compound, um, I will allow you to just to show the three carbons bonded to one another and these additional lines that tell me, right that you know how many more bonds are able to form around each carbon. So that's why it's really important that you do include those. Now, isomers. Isomers are compounds that have the same chemical formula, but
but different structural arrangement of the atoms. So here's an example. One of the isomers is hexane. So we've got six carbons with 14 hydrogens surrounding them. But what happens is we can actually rearrange the, um, the, the, the location of some of these carbons. Right? So if you look at these carbons that are on the inside, usually the carbons on in a straight chain right, that are already bonded to, to other carbons can form bond with up to two hydrogens if they're in the middle. Right? So what we have here is how can we have a CH3 here in the middle? And what that means is one of these carbons has what we call a CH3 branched chain that branches off from the main chain. right? And that's why we can still have a total of six carbons in all of these, right? yet they are all named differently, but their derivative is a hexane because we've got six carbon atoms 14 hydrogen atoms in total, that will give us pretty much a uh, single bond between uh, all the carbons. And we will pretty much have these five different isomers, they, which will all carry completely different properties from one another, even though their main molecular formula is C6H14. Okay? So you can still have C6H14, but you can have a number of isomers Right? which just kind of shows that the, um, the arrangement of the carbons and hydrogens can be different in all of these isomers, but still have the same number of carbon and hydrogens. Now, structural diagrams. Structural diagrams are two-dimensional representation of the arrangement of a molecule. So in this course, you're going to be actually asked to draw some of these hydrocarbons. You will be asked to name some of these hydrocarbons based on these diagrams, okay? based on these structural diagrams. Now, there are three types of uh, structural diagrams that you're going to be responsible to be able to draw. One of them is a complete structural diagram. Here, you're going to show pretty much all the carbons and all the hydrogen bonds. You're going to have a condensed structural diagram, which you're not going to really worry about the hydrogen bonds. You're actually just going to number the number of hydrogens or, uh, associated around each carbon. And finally, the simplest, but it can be the, the tricky one to draw, and it's the uh, line structure diagram. So let's look at uh, the complete structural diagram. Okay, here it's a derivative of hexane, but it is not a hexane molecule. Okay, it's a it's a derivative of hexane because we have six carbons, but they are not in a continuous chain. Okay, because we've got this additional branching off. Okay, so now notice here with this diagram. We have shown every single carbon-carbon bond. We have also included what the bond looks like with all the hydrogens. So now, we can redraw this, and what you'll be responsible for if you're in my class is as follows. So we've, we're going to bond the, the, the carbons. Right. Please, uh, here we have our six carbons. Please never just leave it like that when you're, when you're asked to, uh, to, to draw it include around each carbon actual just lines to show us how many hydrogens can bond to uh, around it, right? So if we look at this next carbon here that I'm darkening, we've already got three bonds associated with it, which means we've got room for one more hydrogen. This top carbon here has room for three hydrogens. This next carbon in this chain here that I'm darkening has room for two. This next one has room for two. And this last one has room for three. So I can simplify my complete structural diagram as such, okay, without including the hydrogens. But what do I show, right, in that place? Well, I at least show these straight lines, okay? Please be clean with the, with the diagrams. Last thing you want to do is show me uh, a line that may look like a double bond, right, which will make um, one of these questions incorrect. Now, condensed structural diagrams. These show only the bonds between the carbon atoms. It groups the carbons and the hydrogen. So here we have our complete structural diagram. Now, how do we go about drawing our condensed? So how I like to start always with our carbons.
So I like to start with all my carbons. So I've got a total of six carbons. Then, that's the only bond you need to show. Those are the only lines in a condensed diagram that you need to show. After that, you, all you need to do is identify how many hydrogens. So with this first hydrogen here up at the top, we have one bond, so we can form bond, uh, three bonds with three different hydrogens. Here, the first carbon here on the left, this carbon is bonded once, so it has room for three more carbons. This next carbon is bonded three times, so it has room for only one hydrogen. And we can, we can see all that here uh, with our complete diagram. But what if you're asked to just draw a, uh, a condensed without drawing the, uh, the structure? So ignore the diagram that I have up there on the left, and let's just focus on trying to identify this middle one. So we've got this, this, this carbon right here bonded twice on either end, so it has room for two more hydrogens. Next carbon, also still bonded twice, so it also has room for two hydrogens. And this carbon on the outside is bonded once, so it has room for three hydrogens. So this is an example of a condensed structural diagram. Notice the only bonds that are shown are the ones between the carbon atoms. And then we just kind of write in all the hydrogens and how many hydrogens are associated with each carbon. So it's really important, remember, four bonds that can be formed around carbon. How many uh, bonds are being formed already with the carbons around it? And then figure out how many more left that will make up the hydrogens. And the last one is what we call the line structural diagram. Only the bonds are represented here. And what we're going to do is we're actually just going to show straight lines. So. This carbon to carbon, actually let's use it here. This carbon to carbon bond here, we will show as a straight line. This next carbon, we're gonna show as an additional line, but we're gonna kind of zigzag each carbon. This next carbon is gonna show with that. And this last carbon here, we're gonna show with another line. So each line that we draw assume that there is a carbon on either end. Okay? So we, don't have, we know in, in these line diagrams, if we don't show an oxygen, chlorine, there is no other um, symbol in this formula aside from carbons and hydrogens, but we don't show the hydrogens. Now, we've got this one more branch here to another carbon. So we find that carbon and we just draw a straight line. So this is what we call a line structural diagram of the same molecule that we're drawing, okay? So remember that, and, and I'm gonna put it in red, but you do not include this in your diagram. Each part of the line represents a carbon. I have drawn in six red dots. Each one of those points represents the location of the carbon. We don't care about the hydrogens. We assume we already know that there are the correct number of hydrogens around it. So be careful what the question asks you. If it asks you for a condensed, if it asks you for a complete, or if it asks you for a line structural diagram. You'll get more practice uh, with the uh, coming chapters that we'll be discussing.